Welcome everybody. It's uh, my great pleasure to uh, introduce today's speaker, uh, Grzegorz Reicher Mieljoc from uh, Center for Theoretical Physics or from our institute. So uh, Grzesiek is a PhD student of Karol Rzeczkowski who works in our institute and also in Jagiellonia University in Krakow. Uh, so uh, Grzesiek is about to finish his PhD as far as I know. So he specializes in entanglement theory, uh, geometry of quantum states, and combinatorial structures of quantum mechanics. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm trying to do my best without like any proper uh, preparation on my side. So it's great to have you, Grzesiek. Uh, uh, the screen is yours. Uh, Guys, uh, yeah. here is Jarek Korbic. I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, I could not launch my Zoom. I'm on the Linux platform today at uh, at work, and uh, of course I a little bit forgot. But when I when I started launching, it's my Zoom does not work simply here on a uh, computer. I don't know what has happened, so I apologize for for not presenting Grzesiek and not being uh, being there from the beginning. I'm I'm, I'm very sorry. Don't worry, it's been a great introduction. Thank you very much for that, Miho. And uh, actually, yes, you, you, you are right about all these fields that I am pursuing. Uh, well, as usual, a PhD student uh, do what his uh, PhD advisor uh, wants him to do. So basically, that's right. Carol is working on these topics and so am I. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm very much interested also in uh, some uh, other things connected um, also uh, with mathematical structures. So in this talk, I'd like to tell you some about mathematical structures and how do they relate to quantum mechanics. So uh, the title is classical to quantum transition using these stochastic matrices. And let me start by giving you the main motivation that uh, led us to work on this topic. So basically the problem starts from the stochastic matrices, which are such matrices that have found a great uh, deal of interest in the field of, uh, for example, um, Markov chains and also other uh, setups which require probabilistic treatment. So basically, uh, this stochastic matrix is such that is non-negative and also it's all rows and columns sum to unity. So as you can see, this is closely related to a quantum notion. Uh, well, not only quantum, but widely used in quantum mechanics, unitary matrices. So these matrices also have some kind of uh, similar properties that is, if we take absolute value squared of its element, it will sum up to one. So you can see that getting a, a classical matrix out of a quantum one is fairly easy. That is, every unitary matrix has its uh, quantum counterpart, a uh, classical quantum uh, counterpart. Uh, well, what about the other way around? Uh, well, the problem is that it does not work that well. And uh, the problem of finding when does, does it work and when it does not is going to be the main um, topic of uh, my talk. So uh, let me uh, give you some motivation uh, from the uh, physical perspective and also from the real world perspective, maybe on walks. So uh, a walk, uh, a simple quantum walk would be, um, would be containing a chain of nodes which are connected only with, uh, with its neighbors and its neighbors are two. For every uh, node, there, there are two neighbors. So K connects only with K plus one and K minus one, obviously. At each step, uh, there is a possibility that if a state uh, have been has been in a uh, previously in the cave position, it might stay in the cave position, move to k minus one, or move to k plus one. There are some probabilities uh, connected with uh, all these transitions, and obviously these probabilities must sum up to one. 
So this is a classical perspective. Now take a look at also the quantum perspective. So quantum perspective is quite similar in respect uh, uh, that um, if the state uh, is at a given point in time at, at the cave cat and it may go to another state uh, to its two neighbors or stay in the same state, uh, then there is, might be some unitary that uh, governs this uh, whole transition. And we should require that this unitary fulfills the uh, below equation, uh, which only means that the probabilities are the same as in the classical work, and also that uh, probabilities are obviously concerned. Now, the problem is that, and this is widely known since 25 years, uh, that such quantum works does not, uh, do not exist. And uh, what uh, researchers have been trying to find out is how to uh, possibly generalize the setup or how to overcome this problem with quantum works. And it turns out that if you um, add- Sorry, yes. sorry Joshua, can you give some quick reasoning why, uh, or like justification why uh, you cannot find uh, a unitary? Yeah, so uh, the problem is that um, the reasoning uh, is, uh, well, I've been trying to put this reasoning in my presentation, but the problem is that this is a very computational one, and I, I really don't think that anyone would benefit from that. Uh, so you can find this uh, in, in this paper, but basically uh, the reasoning is as follows that you take some uh, unitary and you just uh, by um, finding properties of its row of its rows and orthogonality uh, relations you just find out that uh, there is a contradiction so there is no such unitary so basically it's just by uh, making computations on a paper but like there's never such a unitary or sometimes uh well um uh, I'm not sure about uh, all of the cases, but definitely in the simplest case where there are this chain of nodes, uh, and I think this also generalizes to the uh, more uh, more complicated uh, chain of nodes. Yes, I, I think I think this is a general uh, the general statement. But you're assuming that there's no dissipation or something. Yes, yes. Basically, what you're assuming is that there is no dissipation, all the probabilities are conserved, and uh, the state, uh, the quantum system should be in a pure state. Yes, these are basic assumptions. Um, so, Zoshek, but like there are some, like maybe, maybe depending on the boundary conditions, there are maybe some cases, right? You can, in principle, have uh, just, you know, swap or identity. Uh, right? Well, so, yes. So you mean uh, you, you exclude you exclude those cases? I would I, say I that uh, that maybe in the simplest cases, yes. But uh, if you try to go like uh, anything more than um, two systems and swap, uh, actually, what you are saying is right. Now uh, I can tell you that. Uh, there's a caveat in here that there are these quantum works which can be described by this, but these are only the simplest one in the sense that they are swaps, for example. So mm -hmm. if you want to have these uh, coefficients C plus, C zero and C minus uh, to be uh, different from zero or one, then these quantum works does, uh, do not exist, basically. So uh, if you consider anything more than the trivial, case of uh, quantum works, you need to add something more than just uh, this uh, treatment by a unitary matrix. But it's still pretty mysterious because what you had two slides back was saying that if you take a unitary, you can get the Bs. So, so yeah. then, is it a case that the, so, so what gives somehow? Uh, well, um, let me think about that. Mm. You are right that uh, if you consider a, a system um, which can be described 
uh, uh, quantum unitary matrix, then it can be brought to a B stochastic matrix. But now the problem is converse. So uh, you go from classical walks to the quantum ones. And this is the, the main uh, problem that we'll be dealing with. So the going from quantum to classical is fairly simple and fairly obvious. We, this is the other way, which is uh, not uh, that simple and which uh, requires uh, careful reasoning. So but you're right. Uh, you are right. At the beginning, I told you that the quantum to classical is very good, but this is the other way around. But surely, like this walk that you wrote down with the chain, it's a, it has quantum um, unitary evolution. So that must give some Bs then. But is it a matter that it doesn't give? It, uh, if you want to have all the proper transformational rules, then the matrix that uh, will be in there is not a unitary. So this is a problem. So at some point, uh, you just cannot uh, fulfill all the unitarity conditions. So this is the, the main problem in here. Pretty weird, but let's go on. Yeah, that, that, this is pretty weird. And uh, well, um, I encourage you to to check out this this uh, paper because uh, you know this is uh, also a very mysterious uh, from the also very interesting from the point of uh, people working in quantum information because uh, this is the reason why they need to find some solution some way around this problem. So uh, one of the most uh, known and most widely studied solution is to just add an additional degree of freedom. And if you just additional, uh, if you add this degree of freedom, uh, let it be a coin, uh, with, which is, can be zero or one, then it turns out that such a unitary matrix can be uh, constructed. So um, it is uh, weird that it cannot be done simply, but there are uh, workarounds this problem. So, um, what this shows from uh, for my presentation is that uh, the problem uh, really has some impact on uh, the work that is being done uh, on, on the topic of quantum walks and the quantum to classical transition. Now, uh, as I, I as I was saying. This uh, quantum, uh, this classical to quantum transition helps deciding um, whether you, if you take a given uh, walk, can you quantify it? Uh, well, quantize it. So uh, in this sense, um, it turns out that it can be done sometimes, but with this additional degree of freedom. And then you have the solution to the problem that I posed at the beginning. So how to go from the classical B stochastic matrix to a unitary one. Okay, now we also have another motivation, which is uh, fairly important, but not from the perspective of quantum information, but rather from the um, physicists uh, work on the field of uh, particles, uh, particle physics. So there is a famous um, uh, CKM matrix, and uh, this matrix governs uh, the uh, probabilities of transition between different quark families. So if you have uh, one quark family and uh, at some point uh, it can uh, change to a different quark family, uh, then um, what we have is the measurement of these probabilities because at the beginning you had a certain number of particles and then at the end you have another certain, uh, um, certain number of particles possibly of different kind. So what you have at the end are the probabilities, but the probabilities are not what counts, are not what um, is at the bottom of uh, the problem, because at the bottom of the problem, there is a unitary matrix. So what you, we observe is only this uh, uh, matrix after the transition. So, Mm, uh, this again shows that the perspective and studying uh, which matrices can be converted back to a unitary one 
is of importance because let's say that we have some experiment and in this experiment, uh, there is a bistochastic matrix at the end and this matrix cannot be converted back to a unitary. Well, if it, that would be true, then the, this would mean that either there was something wrong with collection of data or the experiment itself, or there is a need for a new model to study this conversion between the quark families. Now, what uh, I've been talking to you right now is about these families, uh, these three families. So if we have three families, then obviously there is a three by three matrix. Uh, however, nothing is known about um, more than three families, let's say four or five of quarks. But uh, well, it cannot be said that uh, these families, these additional families do, do not exist. So it is also important to study higher dimensional stochastic and unitary matrices. Okay. And as a final motivation, I'd like to tell you about, uh, well, um, motivation coming from the decoherence. So if uh, you consider decoherence, then uh, basically, uh, and to put it in simple words, the coherence means that uh, we um, lose some information about the system. So the system uh, was, uh, let's say that we are considering uh, different uh, quantum uh, channels, then it turns out that if uh, we, the system uh, is able to decohere, then these quantum channels uh, turn up to be the same um, a classical channel. So basically these two, uh, these two channels decohere to the same one. So this is fairly uh, similar to the bistochastic to a unitary transition because also in the case of matrices, what we do is we just forget the face of um, elements of a unitary matrix. So uh, it is possible that studying these matrices and the transition between them uh, might be beneficial to our understanding of decoherence. Okay, now let me move uh, to the tools that we've been using and to introduction uh, to the mathematical statement uh, in uh, our field. So let me define unistochastic matrices. So um, let us take a bistochastic matrix and we will call this matrix a unistochastic one if it has a corresponding unitary one. So if uh, we can forget about the phases and uh, square the elements and then we will obtain the bistochastic matrix that we are interested in. Okay, now the problem is to decide whether uh, there are some matrices which are unistochastic. Well, it is pretty obvious that some of the bistochastic matrices are unistochastic. Why is that? Let us take any permutation matrix. Then this permutation matrix is obviously bistochastic because all its rows and columns sum to one. Now, this matrix is also a unitary matrix because it's a permutation, all permutation matrix all permutation matrices are unitary. Uh, so now this forgetting about the phase and squaring is, uh, is fairly obvious. Now, um, what is of particular importance, the matrix that uh, we will uh, be concerned a lot in the uh, future parts of uh, my presentation is a flat matrix. So this is a bistochastic matrix with all its elements the same. Uh, which gives uh, it a name, a flat matrix. And uh, the name comes from the fact that if you look at its matrix, then you just see a flat surface. Well, there is no element which is different from the other. Uh, okay. Now, is this matrix unistochastic? As it turns out, it is. But uh, can you think of a, a unitary matrix that will be connected with that? Can anyone? Mm, show me such a matrix. Okay, 
I think uh, maybe not, but uh, it is uh, pretty simple to see that a Fourier matrix will do the job because, uh, well, obviously, our amplitudes uh, are um, uh, proper, and also uh, it is a unitary matrix. Now, okay, so we have some matrices which are unistochastic. So maybe orbi stochastic matrices are unistochastic, but this is not the case. So let us take this fairly simple matrix, which is just a flat matrix, uh, but with zeros on the diagonal. Uh, so this matrix is not a unistochastic matrix. Why is that? Because if you consider a unitary matrix, which would correspond to this stochastic one, uh, this would be obviously the same in respect to uh, all amplitudes should be the same, but the phases might differ. Now, if you take the uh, product of the first and the second row, then there, is, there are two zeros, which means that only these, uh, the product of these two elements uh, is what survives. And obviously, this is a complex number of um, modulus one, so it cannot be equal zero. Thus, it's not a unitary matrix, and this bistochastic matrix is not unistochastic. Uh, the um, proof that I gave you, this uh, simple proof that I gave you, can be formalized more. That is, if you take any bistochastic matrix, let's say, uh, for now, of uh, dimension is three by three. Uh, then you can take uh, the product of the first and the second row of the supposed uh, unitary matrix. Now, a necessary condition is that these numbers, uh, when you forget about the very phases, is that these number numbers form a unitary triangle. That is, you can create a triangle out of them. Uh, and this, to these matrices, we will refer to for the rest of uh, my talk as bracelet matrices. Well, the name is also self-explaining. Uh, if you take uh, dimensions of uh, matrices higher than three, then uh, there is a unitary polygon that must be formed by these numbers. And possibly you can think of a strange bracelet that you can wear around your neck. Um, which would be formed by these numbers and lengths. Now, uh, these are necessary conditions. So necessary conditions for a given bistochastic matrix to be unistochastic is that uh, all its rows and all its columns must form a polygon, this unitarity polygon. Uh, now, in the case of three by three matrices, all bracelet matrices are unistochastic. So it suffices to check this fairly simple condition on all pairs of rows and columns. And then you can be certain that the given matrix is or is not a unistochastic one. And what you can see on the figure is that um, if you take a slice through the bistochastic uh, set, the set of bistochastic matrices, and the slice uh, which is uh, cornered by identity matrix, uh, the full cycle and full cycles um, squared. Then this is a equilateral triangle and some of the matrices which are shown in red are not bracelet and are not unistochastic. And the rest of them, which, which is green, are unistochastic and obviously also bracelet. Uh, in the center of the figure, you can see this uh, flat matrix that I've been talking about before. Um, okay, now you know something about the geometrical structure of the set of unistochastic matrices in the case of three by three. Uh, so let us move to higher dimensions. As it turns out, if you consider matrices four by four, then the bracelet condition, condition is not sufficient. That is, there are some bracelet matrices which are not unistochastic. Uh, and this was proved um, uh, almost uh, six, uh, 16 years ago 
uh, in the paper that you can see on the bottom. Uh, and also there is a very interesting, uh, um, very interesting uh, remark that the flat matrix, which is somehow in the center of these stochastic matrices, also is on the border of uh, unistochastic matrices because there are some uh, directions in which you can go only infinitesimally small and you will get a matrix which is not unistochastic. So this is a fairly interesting um, uh, remark because Usually, uh, sets are not that complicated, but in this case, the center of the set uh, lies also uh, at, uh, at its border. Um, okay, now what uh, is the work, uh, our work that is covered by my presentation is that uh, three years ago, we published a, a paper um, uh, with uh, some algorithm which is able to decide whether a given bistochastic matrix uh, is unistochastic, but only in the case of four by four matrices. So the algorithm is um, actually, um, the idea of the algorithm is not entirely our idea because uh, as I've been notified by Carol, uh, it was uh, proposed to him by uh, Uwe Hagerup who, Unfortunately, I have not had um, opportunity to meet, but he was a Danish mathematician. And uh, basically the idea goes as follows, that you divide, you divide every matrix in the block matrices, which would be two by two. And then without losing generality, some of the elements can be uh, set to have phase equal to zero, which uh, drastically uh, simplifies the setup because otherwise you need to consider all 16 um, all 16 phases. Uh, now the exact implementation of this algorithm uh, is uh, on uh, my GitHub uh, page so you can uh, check this out in the Mathematica file. And uh, what I can say is that uh, only what remains to check is this uh, last block uh, which um, well, which uh, needs to be the same as in the matrix that you started with. But uh, in case anyone is interested, uh, I suggest you look up the paper. Also, I can uh, ask you, uh, I can answer your questions uh, if you have any, preferably at the end. Um, now, let me move Okay, on. I dare to, okay, sure. Zosik, I dare to uh, ask a question now because we have this open format, sorry for the. Uh, okay, no yeah. problem then. So uh, just I was wondering this algorithm is it like uh, okay like for example you have this th those problems like SDPs like is it like exact uh, meaning that uh, you are let's say certain like if the uh, algorithm spits out no it's yes yes there is no yes uh, we are exact so uh, if uh, you want to go in the details I can tell you that. Uh, basically, uh, what is um, um, what is important from the perspective of the algorithm is checking all the possible um, permutations of the matrix because uh, this requires that some of the blocks uh, have a norm which is smaller than one. And then you apply these permutations and for each permutation you check whether the last block, uh, which is uh, depicted by dots in here, is the same as at the beginning. And if it is so, then the algorithm says yes. If not, then it checks all the other permutations. And at the end, uh, it gives you an answer whether uh, a matrix is or is not a uh, unistochastic. Okay, so like up to computation of norms, it's uh, exact, let's say. Yes, uh, well, uh, mm, uh, I would say that uh, well, not, not, not the computation of norms is not that uh, important. It is only important because we need to consider uh, all permutations. This, uh, this is the, the crucial point, uh, I, I would say. Okay, thanks. Sure, th thank you for your question. Um, 
Okay, uh, so uh, let me move on from the um, bracelet set uh, to some uh, other um, important questions regarding uh, be stochastic matrices. So, um, if we are to uh, restrict ourselves to the circulant matrices, uh, then the problem goes even simpler. Now, what are circulant matrices? The circulant matrix uh, is such that you need to specify only the first row in order to obtain all the information about the matrix, because the first row gets translated by one, and then you obtain a second row, and uh, the second translation gives you the last row. So basically, you only need three numbers uh, to determine a given circulant matrix. Uh, what we know is that in the three by three case, all circulant matrices, uh, for all circulant matrices, all bracelet ones are unistochastic because this was true for uh, the whole set of bistochastic matrices. Now, if we go to the uh, higher dimension of four by four matrices, then uh, we know that there are some matrices which are bracelet but are not unistochastic. Uh, but we've been able to prove that circulant matrices are special. And uh, in their case, every circulant bracelet is a, is a unistochastic matrix. And the details of the proof uh, can be found in uh, the paper that was uh, posted on archive in the beginning of this year. And uh, in order to not bore you too much, too much with all these mathematical details, uh, I'd like to show you also some uh, figures which are always, as I know, uh, I'll always uh, appreciate it during presentations. So in here, you can see the set of all circulant uh, matrices, all dimension four by four. So there are, uh, they form a tetrahedron and the corners of this tetrahedron are uh, very simple matrices, uh, identity uh, and uh, full cycle, full cycle cube, uh, a full cycle squared and full cycle cube. Uh, and also due to, unfortunately, I'm not the one who made this uh, beautiful 3D uh, printout, but it's always good to have some friends uh, who are, uh, who have access to these kinds of tools. And uh, well, by this means you can say that uh, your, your mathematical work uh, really have some impact on the physical uh, space um, of our world. So what you can see in here are these uh, two special uh, edges, uh, which can be seen also in here. So all the, the, the green set inside is the set of the uh, uh, circulant matrices, which are bracelet and thus are also uh, unistochastic matrices. Okay, let me now move on to uh, factorizable matrices. And uh, let me remind you that what we want is a full characterization of unistochastic matrices. But it's not that simple. What we did at the beginning is we have found a superset uh, of uh, bracelet matrices. And uh, this is a superset, so this means that every unistochastic matrix is also a bracelet. The converse is not true, uh, as we already know. Uh, can we find some other bound on, on our uh, set of unistochastic matrices? And um, it turns out that you can do something like this by using factorizable matrices. Uh, in order to introduce these matrices, let me start by elementary matrices. And a matrix uh, will be called elementary if uh, it acts non-trivially only on two rows and columns. And all the other rows and columns uh, should um, be the same as in the identity matrix. So this should act uh, trivially then. And a matrix will be called factorizable if it is composed of a product of these elementary matrices. Obviously, uh, these elementary matrices need not act on the same 
uh, subspace because if it were to act on the same uh, subspace, then uh, it would act trivially on all the other subspaces. So you need to, um, to uh, multiply all the, uh, po possibly all the um, uh, elementary matrices in order to get something which is not trivial. Uh, let me uh, just mention that this product is possibly infinite, and uh, well, this is of not uh, this is of practical meaning for our proof. Um, but uh, let me move on to the properties of these matrices. Now, these matrices were introduced uh, over 35 years ago, so uh, these are not a novel concept of uh, ourselves. Uh, and um, people in the 80s were able to prove it that uh, in the case of higher dimensional sets from three by three, uh, these factorizable and unistochastic sets are not comparable. This means uh, this is depicted on uh, the figure uh, that uh, I've taken from uh, our from our article, and uh, this is the general case that can be seen in the um, set of bistochastic matrices. So there is some border of uh, bistochastic matrices, and there are some bistochastic matrices which do not meet bracelet conditions, and these are the red ones. So these are, in some sense, the most extremal matrices. And also, we know, we are certain, that these matrices do not have their quantum counterparts. Now, inside, there is a set of yellow matrices, which is bracelet, uh, which are bracelet matrices. And we know that this is a separate set of our unistochastic set. This unistochastic set, depicted in green, uh, in some cases, um, uh, um, it uh, goes as far as to the um, as uh, to the to the border of whole uh, bistochastic set, and then there is also the blue set of factorizable matrices. Obviously, uh, the flat matrix is uh, the central matrix is always in all these sets. Uh, okay, so this was a historical remark and uh, the remark which bases our uh, research. Now let's move on to the new results. And uh, what we proved is that uh, factorizable uh, indeed are a subset of the uh, bracelet set, which means that this figure is uh, true, that is, there is no blue matrix, which is outside of the yellow set, which in principle might be true. Uh, and what we were able uh, also to prove is that if you take any matrix uh, from the bracelet set and multiply it by any matrix from factorizable set, then this matrix should stay in the, fact in the bracelet set. Uh, I also need to mention that uh, this was already hinted in the previous work from all, almost 20 years ago, but uh, without a formal proof. And now, in order to express the statement uh, in shorter mathematical terms, maybe more obscure, but definitely shorter, any um, matrix from the factorizable set and any matrix from the bracelet set then both of the products belong to the bracelet set. Okay, and uh, let me move on to the, some other geometrical properties uh, of all these sets. What you can see on the figure is that um, the, all these sets, apart from the bistochastic set, somehow resembles a star. Uh, in what sense? Uh, if you want to give it a precise mathematical meaning, it means that there is some center from which you can uh, connect a line, any, uh, from which you can uh, make a line to any other element of a set, and the whole line would belong to this set. And this is a general property of the sets, 
And uh, what we've been able to discover is that um, the sets that we are working with seems seem to um, seem to uh, follow this rule. That is, uh, the flat matrix is really in the center and uh, really uh, has some special properties. Um, and uh, this is what we have proven for factorizable and also bracelet sets. So the yellow and blue sets. But uh, as for the unistochastic matrices, so these matrices um, of the highest importance for our uh, research, and unfortunately, we don't have uh, a proof, uh, but we have only a conjecture. Uh, and uh, the proof is uh, valid in the small dimensional ones, uh, small dimensional matrices, and also we've uh, checked uh, this numerically that it works in the uh, dimension four by four. However, in five by five or even higher dimensions, the problem uh, is much more complicated. That is, uh, there is no known algorithm which determines whether a given matrix is unistochastic. And therefore, uh, it's still an open problem, but uh, it is definitely uh, the problem uh, which is interesting uh, because it gives us, uh, it might give us some uh, understanding of uh, what uh, does the set look like uh, from the geometrical perspective. Um, okay, now uh, I would like to end with also uh, some uh, physical perspective because what I've been talking so far is mostly mathematical tools but without uh, this physical background. Obviously, I gave you some uh, physical background uh, uh, with regard to the uh, motivation, but there is also some more physical uh, motivation. And this refers to entanglement. So if you take a matrix, which is, um, let's say, four by four, then such a matrix might be also considered as a basis uh, of the Hilbert space, uh, Hilbert space of dimension uh, four. That is, each of its rows or equivalently columns uh, can be considered an um, element of this base. Now, the base that would be connected to uh, the Hadamard matrix uh, is uh, the maximally entangled base. That is, all its elements are maximally entangled. And uh, where does it uh, go uh, on our picture of uh, base stochastic matrices? Because we know that Hadamard matrix uh, is a unitary, so there is some base stochastic matrix connected with that. And as it is uh, not hard to see, uh, the matrix connected with it is uh, mm, as a flat matrix. So with a W4 in our, in our picture. So this is the, this W4 is connected with the maximally entangled base, and also identity, um, or in fact any other permutation matrix, uh, can be thought of as a base of the same Hilbert space, but this base uh, would be separable, completely separable. Now, uh, what we can do is we can connect these bases, but how? Uh, so the problem is that in the unitary set, it is not easy and it is not obvious how to connect to unitary matrices. Because uh, if you take just a um, combination of uh, two matrices, unitary matrices, then this combination in general is not a unitary matrix. But what cannot be done in the unitary, unitary set can be done in the set of base stochastic matrices. And, uh, if we uh, are to connect all the matrices uh, between a flat and identity matrix uh, by a line, which we'll call, we will call it a ray. Uh, and if this ray is, uh, is uh, a unistochastic, composed of unistochastic matrices, then every one of its uh, every one of them, every one of these matrices uh, is, uh, can, uh, can form a base and this base will 
uh, have the same amount of entanglement for every vector and thus the name equi-entangled basis. Uh, and since this interpolates between maximally entangled and fully separable bases, then by this uh, means we can uh, find all bases of equal entanglement between zero and maximal. Uh, now, uh, what we've been able uh, to prove is that indeed these rays are unistochastic in many dimensions. Uh, not in the in all dimensions, but actually in uh, infinitesimally many dimensions. Uh, for example, in all even dimensions up to 20. Um, uh, sorry, Grzesiek, can I ask? I'm, I'm sure. a bit confused. Uh, like, what ensures, like in this construction that is very beautiful, but what ensures that, uh, like, all basis elements are have the same entanglement? This is what I didn't get. Yes. So uh, this comes from the fact that if you um, interpolate between, uh, in the set of stochastic matrices, interpolate between the flat matrix and the, uni uh, and the identity matrix, then all its rows are uh, very similar. In fact, uh, this matrix would be circulant. And the fact mm -hmm. that all its rows are almost the same uh, apart from the phases, makes it uh, a base, which is equi-entangled. OK, just one more uh, question. Uh, OK, thanks for the explanation. Uh, like, have you tried to, like, to attack the same problem, namely like equi-entangled bases, uh, using this, uh, like, well, Kaoli? Because there, there are some natural paths in the space of uh, uh, well, yes. Lee groups, more yes. generally speaking. So, in, specifically, there is something which is called Kaoli path, which is uh, something that imp that gives you like a rational interpolation between, in principle, two elements of a unitary. Yes, group. yes. Uh, uh, I know. Uh, uh, I know about this interpolation. The problem is that um, if you consider uh, this interpolation, uh, then uh, in the set of stochastic matrices, this interpolation is no longer a straight line. So mm -hmm. uh, these uh, other uh, interpolations, which are not done in the set of stochastic matrices, uh, they tend to curve. Uh, uh, they tend to curve in the middle. So uh, I don't have any exact figure at hand, but what, what I can tell you is that unfortunately, only by uh, this way you can obtain a, a straight line, which is of importance for us since uh, this straight interpolation gives us equi-entangled bases. Mm -hmm. But uh, funny that you mentioned the name of Kylie, since uh, actually uh, his construction uh, on Hadamard matrices and also on some symmetric matrices uh, was uh, of uh, utmost importance for us uh, in order to, to prove that actually this all race uh, are uh, are you stochastic? Uh, I hope that uh, yeah. I answered your question. No, no, you you did. I mean, but I guess that shows. Uh, I mean, the, the, your last comment shows more how uh, prolific uh, uh, mathematician Kelly was, yes. <laughs> rather than the connection between. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I think there is no particular connection between yeah. his work okay. done in the one field and the other. But uh, yeah, definitely his name uh, might came up a, li um, a lot in, in the study of these matrices. Well, that's yeah. a stupid question. Thanks. Um, in what sense are they equally entangled? Because the, the identity is obviously not entangled at all. Uh, can you repeat the question? Well, so, so you mentioned that this, this set going from the uh, flat matrix to the identity is equally yes. entangled. But in yes. what sense? Because the identity is not entangled at all. Yes, and this is exactly what is, uh, what is meant. Thank you for this question. So uh, the entanglement of identity is equal to zero. Yeah. In this sense, this, is, this base is equally entangled because none of its element possess any entanglement. And okay. if you consider, Double yes. Has maximal entanglement, right? Yes, and the, the middle, this uh, the center of this uh, flat matrix, connects to the uh, the base with the maximal 
entanglement. Yes, you are right. So uh, once again, uh, if you connect the base with the with no entanglement at all with the base uh, of the highest possible entanglement, then all the points in between uh, would correspond to bases of intermediate entanglement. So they would not have zero, but not would not have maximal entanglement. Right, so maybe it's just a terminology that I don't understand, because if they're intermediate in entanglement, in what sense are they equally entangled? Because equally Does, indicate the same, I don't know, what amount or kind maybe. Yes, so they are equally entangled in the sense that if you have a base of vectors, then uh, in, in general, all these vectors can have different entanglement. Mm -hmm. But in the case of this construction, they all have the same entanglement. Ah, so it's the same quality, but not the same amount. Yes, yes, ah. exactly, exactly. Okay. I, I'm sorry to have misled you on this. I might not know the terminology. That's all. Yes, uh, actually, it's not very, uh, not very widely known in, in the experts in, in, in entanglement. But um, yes, I'm sorry to have misled you a little. Uh, yeah, so. Um, now, uh, or maybe there are some further questions to it. Um, okay, if not, then uh, possibly someone might ask at the big, at the end. Um, so let me move on to the outlook and uh, some future work. Uh, so the the main problem that we've been tackling is uh, characterizing unistochastic set. So what uh, we did, we found some, some other sets and uh, characterized them instead. Um, so uh, we are still wondering whether factorizable matrices uh, will give us some more insight because, uh, well, we know that uh, when multiplied by a bracelet matrix matrices, they, um, they stay in the bracelet set, but uh, also, Mm, it is possible that they would give us more mm, more arguments uh, for the unistochasticity of a given matrix. Uh, also, uh, what we don't know is uh, the is for the circular matrices. We've been able to prove that uh, in the case of four by four uh, matrices, it's fairly easy to to check whether a given matrix is unistochastic. But we don't know what would be for the bigger uh, matrices. And uh, well, uh, as for the bracelet uh, matrices, it helped us uh, to um, to understand a lot. But still, we we hope for more. And uh, lastly, um, we are wondering what uh, are the geometric properties of all these sets, and uh, we still don't know uh, the answer uh, to the uh, unistochastic set. But this is definitely interesting from the geometrical perspective. Okay, and now to summarize my results, my, uh, not only mine, obviously, but all the uh, people that I've indicated at the beginning. Uh, and uh, we have that um, every factorizable matrix uh, multiplied by every bracelet matrix, any bracelet matrix is uh, inside bracelet set. Uh, also for even dimensions smaller than 20, Mm, the race and counter race, so the race which goes on the other side uh, from the flat matrix are unistochastic. Uh, also for infinitesimally, infinitely many other dimensions, but not all even. Um, and also that for four by four circular matrices, a bracelet set uh, is the same as unistochastic set. Now, uh, let me finish uh, by uh, reminding that there is a lot of physical motivation standing behind our research. And uh, let me tell you about the three more, most important questions, I think, concerning uh, physical um, realizations of these mathematical uh, properties. And this uh, connects to classical transition, uh, quantum to classical transition, uh, or rather classical to quantum transition in case of uh, graphs. And uh, what about more than three families of quarks? What can we say about the matrices that should, uh, um, should describe them? 
And uh, can we understand more about decoherence by using uh, this uh, classical to quantum transition? And as a final remark, I should say that, well, uh, a mathematical analysis of matrices is not that boring, but uh, if you want it not to be uh, extremely boring, then you need to have a friend who will 3D print out some sets. And uh, well, that's my final remark. Thank you for your attention. Um. I'm sorry, but there is some problem with uh, your voice, Jarek. <laughs> okay. So Jarek was supposed to backing me up because of my poor connection, but yeah. <laughs> it seems that it's uh, that his is even worse today. <laughs> oh gosh, we cannot really hear you, Jarek. Okay, thank you, Grzesiek, for the, the very nice talk. We have now time for questions and comments. Sorry, my voice might be cracking because there is some storm coming over where, where I am. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah, like, please ask, ask a question if you want. Yeah. Yeah, maybe better in chat, I think. Yeah, like, we really cannot hear you. We, we can't hear you. Maybe you can log off and log in again to the meeting. Maybe this would help. There is something with the encoding. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like, so guys, are there any questions to, uh, to Grzesiek or comment? <laughs> that was a chicken or something. I can, <laughs> I can have questions actually. Lots of questions because maybe I don't know much about these things. Um, uh, please. So there was this number 20, for example, on the previous slide. Um, is that in uh, you are, you are interesting in the 20th slide? No, 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 in the limit of n. Oh, oh, you, you, you mean n less than yes. 20. Is that like a numerical limit in the sense that you never went, you weren't able to go to 22 or there's something happened? No, it's actually a mathematical um, restriction. So um, in the case, it is similar to Hadamard matrices. So um, we know that Hadamard matrices, um, real Hadamard matrices should exist only in the case of multiples of uh, four. Uh, but uh, well, what we don't know is that whether for a given number, there is a Hadamard matrix. So if there is all, it's only a combinatorial design in some sense. And similarly in here, uh, we've been able to prove this, um, this statement because there are some um, matrices. In, in fact, these are symmetric conference matrix, matrices, and they do exist in, in all these uh, dimensions, but suddenly for 22, it is not known whether such a matrix exists. Uh, so this it. was the restriction. I see. So, so actually, it's still bugging me this this example at the beginning about the tunneling, um, because it's it's sort of a different issue to what you, was being discussed later. Because there, there's like a clear quantum system, which doesn't seem to. Yes, you you mean at the beginning about these quantum walks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so I'm thinking that maybe it's an issue of the basis, right? If you set up such a Hamiltonian, yes. then if you make a unitary evolution on that, then you simply don't have localized walks like that because the eigenfunctions or something spread over different sites. So you can't have ones that are restricted just to three, maybe four. Yes. Um, very mysterious otherwise. Well, I would say that the most, the, the fact that is uh, restricting it uh, the most is uh, that uh, there are just some properties of unitary matrices that cannot be met in, in the case of these, these graphs. And well, it's just that it is too small a system without this additional degree of freedom provided by this coin uh, so that it is feasible. That, that's what I would say. Um, 
also there are some uh, obviously Hamiltonians that uh, underline all this uh, but uh, the proof um, as I remember is not connected with any particular Hamiltonian so it's only because of the properties of unitary matrices. So it's more a matter of um, which non-zero elements are in the matrix. Yes, I would say that the, the proof is quite similar, only not that simple, as in the case of, of uh, this transition, of whether this matrix is uh, unistochastic. So it is not, because uh, some unitarity conditions are not, uh, pre uh, cannot be met. So this number cannot uh, be made yeah. zero. I see, I see. So it's, it's a more general case of this, yeah. That makes sense. Yes, so I think, um, there was a, a question uh, in the chat. Yeah, so Jarek asked about uh, the, the, I guess, the, the stational state, right? Or like the, how, uh, how Peron Frobenius vector changes from class to class. Um, I'm not sure I know what is Peron Frobenius vector. Uh, can you? Uh... Uh... Okay, as far as I remember, this is like, I guess for every, maybe I, I might be like, yeah, exactly stationary vector. Okay, right? so, uh, the ve okay, a uh, vector that is stabilized. Uh, okay, I see. Um, so, uh, stationary vector with respect to what uh, matrix? Uh, <laughs> the, the stochastic matrix that you're studying. Okay, so, uh, so is there some connection? Mm, so, so uh, as I understand, the question is whether you can study the question of unistochasticity by studying the, the, the vector which is uh, stationary by a given uh, matrix. So, um, actually, we haven't looked into that question, into um, uh, this line of research. Um, that uh, possibly might be interesting, yes. Uh, thank you for, for, for your question because, uh, well, that's uh, always an angle to check. Yeah, uh, I, I cannot tell you much about it because, I, as I told you, uh, we've not uh, researched uh, this topic. Oh, no, no uh, there's uh, some. Oh, so. Uh, mm, so if you. If you have any matrix that is uh, belongs to to different classes, then obviously for this matrix, uh, this uh, parent Frobenius vector would be the same. But if you're asking about more general study, then uh, unfortunately, as I told you, uh, we have not uh, looked at this from this perspective. So uh, yeah, I think this is a good idea for a future work, but um, I cannot tell you much. Yeah, and there was another question, I think. Yeah, the coherence. Mm -hmm. Now, this uh, co uh, connection to, yeah, this connection to decoherence. So mm, uh, I know, uh, yeah, the, the details. Unfortunately, I cannot provide you with any details because uh, we have not studied uh, this from the perspective of decoherence. But uh, yeah, I'm very open to, to discussing this with uh, someone who knows a lot about the problems and can you connect uh, the, these problems? I mean, the unistochasticity problem, because it seems that at least on the level of, uh, at least on the level, uh, concept, conceptual level, there is some connection. Uh, yes, yes, by, by, by this uh, defacing similarity. But I'm not really sure whether um, it is based on any physical model of decoherence. Um, yes, yes, exactly. This decoherence that uh, we have in here is at the level of each matrix elements. Uh, it, it's like that. Yeah, you are right. Okay. okay. Any other questions to Grzesiak? So from the, okay. uh, the PhD Please. studies angle, what remains to be done for your... Uh, yes, yeah, exactly. So uh, I have uh, prepared uh, uh, last slide uh, after my remarks for that. So let me 
answer you uh, with uh, first. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is not really connected to the talk, but uh, this is a requirement for PhD students uh, that I need to talk about my work done. So uh, my, my PhD thesis is going to be um, named quantum mappings and designs. And uh, the part of uh, research connected with mappings that I talked uh, today about is uh, uh, are these uh, two um, papers. So uh, from 2018 and uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so basically I summarized the, the results of them. Now there is also some uh, other uh, about entangling uh, and entangling power of uh, unitary gates. And lastly, uh, the, the works that have been put on archive this year are also connected to designs. So to Sudoku design, which is uh, not known only for uh, physicists, but also for um, laymen. And uh, the problem of 36 entangled officers of Euler. So the problem which uh, was first studied by Euler and then proved that it's not feasible in the classical case, but uh, we were happy to find that uh, there exists a quantum generalization of the problem. So based upon these uh, five papers, uh, I'm, I am right now in the process of writing PhD thesis. Oh, great. Thanks. Uh, I have like a basic question. So, uh, so like uh, for bias, biostochastic matrices, uh, the summation of rows and columns equals to one. Uh, does it serve any purpose or for example, does it have any physical meaning for being uh, some some over one? Yes, actually, uh, thank you for this question. It has a lot of meaning uh, from the perspective of, um, let me go back. Uh, for example, from the perspective of walks. So uh, it is only one example, but uh, in this um, sense, the matrix which uh, preserves, which um, its element, uh, if its elements sum up to identity in each row and column, then such matrix can uh, properly describe a classical uh, probabilities. Between, because if we had a system which might uh, change um, from being in one state to the other, uh, then uh, these probabilities should always sum up to one. Uh, so this is a condition on, on rows. Now the condition on columns uh, should mean uh, that um, also this is preserved uh, the uh, other way from looking uh, on from the other perspective. Mm, but also uh, with uh, conservation of uh, probabilities. So yes, this, this has a lot of uh, physical meaning, uh, not only from the classical perspective, but also as you can see from the quantum one. So could you please go back to uh, slide number one, like first slide? Yeah, so, uh, so like from any uh, biostochastic matrices, we can construct unitary matrices like, from this relation. Yes. Okay, so yeah. So. Yeah, and this exactly from uh, by stochastic matrices, uh, which can be made to construct a unitary matrices, matrix, these are called unistochastic. Yes, exactly this way. Oh, cha -cha. no, no, what I was saying is like, uh, yeah, that is clear. Yeah. So I was saying like, I have a classical matrix, can I construct a unitary? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 this is uh, the main problem uh, that you, we are considering, exactly. Uh -huh. So uh, one other thing. So when we are transitioning from uh, quantum to classical, okay. So there, there, there is a boundary which we don't know. So is there any way, uh, for example, by studying decoherence, uh, can you, can we find a way for the transition? Um, I I'm not sure uh, what exactly uh, are you asking. So, uh, can you re rephrase it? Mm. Sure, sure. So, like, when we transit uh, transit from quantum to classical, like, there must be a boundary, right? 
So, uh, well, not re uh, from the perspective of our research, not really. I mean, you are right that usually we consider that classical RV systems, which are big, and quantum RVs, which are small. Uh, but in our case, mm, it is more like a, a qualitative uh, transition. So, uh, it is not a matter of how big the system is, but rather, how can we describe it? So, uh, either we are describing it in a classical way or in a quantum way. And there is no other uh, in between. So there is not a smooth, uh, there is no, there is no smooth transition uh, in, in this sense. So could you please go back to slide number six? Sure. So here, like if you see the matrix, uh, for example, second row, uh, like it is not sum over one. Yeah, so uh, these are numerical errors. Be well, uh, numerical roundup errors, uh, because uh, I needed to truncate this matrix at, at some point, but uh, oh, okay. Thank so you. you see there is this uh, approximate uh, sign. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thanks. Yeah, no, no problem. So Grzesiek, just commenting on this, like quantum to classical transition, I, I, let me be maybe advocate of the devil or like sort of give a different perspective so both in quantum and classical theories like it's natural to to assume that the class of processes that you have is convex right and from from that pers so you know it's you know you can like from that perspective of course like every b stochastic matrix you can get it uh like mm, if you take like mixtures of uh, unitary channels, of course, right? Acting on diagonal states, I, yes. I, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure about this statement actually, but yes, probably you are right. But this is uh, if you're considering um, more general setup. So if you're considering that uh, some channels might act with uh, certain probabilities, uh, but if you're considering only that there is one channel and the probabilities are only inside this one channel, uh, then uh, you know, there is this impossibility that there are some matrices, some classical matrices, which are not generated by a quantum one. And this is exactly uh, best shown, I think, by this uh, CKM uh, matrix, uh, by this particle uh, physics problem. So in here, you may argue that, okay, if you take many matrices, uh, unitary matrices, and then you mix them, then uh, the resulting matrix might be, uh, which is not unistochastic. And this is true, but underlying uh, physical process, as we know, consists only of one unitary matrix. And if it does, if it's not the, tr the case, then I would say that we need a new model mm -hmm. and that would be very interesting. Sure, but then like you can, but can't you then always like sort of extend by Ancilla, you know, and it will be global. Well, but, but, okay, but, just, but, so okay, I'm like, I'm of course I'm like toying with you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, I would say that if uh, we need to add, add additional Ancilla in mixing the quark families, then that's uh, something that at least goes to, to nature. Uh, Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, so last chance to ask something to Grzesiek before we conclude. Uh, 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 okay. So. Okay. If. Yeah. Can I go? Ahead? Oh, we have quite a vivid discussion today. Please. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, I have this doubt. Like uh, the, the this bistochastic matrix. It seems quite similar to a stochastic matrix. So what exactly is the uh, the main difference that like, changes it. Yeah, uh, so you're right that uh, actually bistochastic matrices um, are a sub uh, subset of um, less general, more general stochastic matrices. And uh, the main difference, I would say that, um, as I told you uh, before, uh, regarding our question, that. Um, Bistochastic matrices need not only conserve the probabilities uh, uh, regarding uh, the, um, 
the the transition from one state to the other uh but also uh that uh, there is this other way around uh, conservation of probabilities this is the the main uh, reason for introducing um by stochastic matrices in uh, in the classical domain, I would say, because you're right that many um, many systems do not need treatment with uh, by stochastic matrices. They only need uh, to be to have conserved probabilities in rows. Yes, but okay. I would say because to this, uh, mm -hmm. because the construction is quite similar, like in stochastic matrices. Also, I think the rows and columns add up to one. Um, that... Well, okay, so maybe this is a matter of con uh, of naming, but from what I know, stochastic matrices uh, conserve um, probabilities in rows, which means that only this part, uh, this equation is fulfilled. So only this sum over i equals one, but not uh, sum over j. So these are stochastic right. matrices, at least um, from the papers I've seen. Maybe they are uh, different, but uh, that you've seen. But anyway, uh, I was talking uh, with uh, mutual fulfillment of both these conditions. So if you right. have stochastic, which is named, uh, but uh, with respect to all, both these, uh, uh, both these uh, conditions, then obviously this is the same as stochastic. Okay, Thank if you. there are no more further questions to Grzesiek, uh, I think we can conclude for today. Many thanks again for Thank joining you for us. Having me. Uh,